can't see the time. I guess it's almost. 8.44. Thank you. Roll call, please. Recording. <clears throat> All right. Tammy Freeling Bogus. Here. Pius Weibel. Present. Katina Wilcher. Rebecca Motley. Here. Stephen Summers. Here. Jim McGuire. Here. Charles Smith. Here. Richard Hilton. Diane Marlin. Dennis Roberts. Here. Deb Frank Feynman. Patricia Avery. Patrick Bram. We have a quorum. All right, thank you. Um, I don't believe there's any audience participation, so we'll go on to our um, approval of our meeting minutes of October 27th. I move to approve. All right. Second. Bias. Second by Steve. <coughs> um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion, uh, I'm sorry, opposed? <laughs> Motion carried. Um, Betty will give us our consolidated financial reports. Sure. So the overall fund balance as of the end of October was just slightly over $10.3 million. This is um, obviously remains healthy at this point. Our receivables are about 865000 which went down slightly from September. That's primarily due to delays in state reimbursement and um, increased activity in preschool for all LIHEAP and weatherization. But overall, the fund balance continues to remain healthy. All right. Thank you. Um, any questions on the financials? Do I hear a motion to accept and place on file the consolidated financial report? So moved. Second. All right. Um, any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, Betty now will give us our um, go over the list of bills for October. Sure. Again, uh, this reflects just increased activity in the fall, primarily for Head Start workforce development because more students are enrolled in classes at Parkland, and also our LIHEAP uh, season begins in the fall. So this just reflects typical activity, and there's nothing unusual to report. All right. Any questions on the list of bills? A uh, motion to accept and place on file the <coughs> list of bills for October. So moved. Second. Yes. Um, Mr. Smith seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'm sorry, who seconded? Um, uh, oh, Mr. Thank Smith. Thank you. All right. On our um, agenda for our action items, the first um, action item is our um, 2018 um, budget compensation adjustments and Delitzo has that report. Thank you Madam Chair and we'll, I'll probably tag team this with uh, Betty but uh, in your packet <clears throat> you do have a memo fr from us on the 2018 uh, budget and compensation adjustments. Uh, two meetings ago we did present to the commissioners the preliminary budget for FY 2018 and uh, we had indicated that in November we, we would be coming back to you uh, to include the um, <clears throat> recommendations for salary adjustments. And so a few things to highlight in the report, and, and Betty will cover the insurance portion. Uh, the uh, FY 2018 budget period is January 1st through December 31st uh, of 2018. Um, <clears throat> we are recommending a 2.1% increase in non-bargaining unit salary ranges. Those ranges are uh, on the next page uh, of the memo listed by the various uh, ranks that we have in, in our salary structure. Uh, the 2.1 percent is consistent with the employer association's recommendation, so we work with them to basically give us, um, <clears throat> um, they, they basically do an, an analysis for us, and we've normally gone with their recommendation. So it's 2.1 percent for uh, non-exempt um, staff. Uh, the 2.1 percent salary range increase is also recommended for the Head Start non-bargaining unit employees. So as you know, earlier on we also did um, present the um, uh, collective bargaining agreement uh, with AFSCME, which was approved by the county board. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things to highlight uh, is that majority of our funding, I believe 88 percent 
of, our, of the funding that the RPC receives are federal and state um, funding. So um, even though sometimes our environment is, is uncertain, but we do have the resources to make these, these, ad these adjustments for FY 2018. Um, <clears throat> one of our approaches here is that uh, we do do performance uh, evaluations. All of those have been completed. Uh, the various uh, directors within our agency have met with their staff, and so there are recommendations being made uh, for uh, merit increases for those that have um, uh, good performance, and we, we have provided guidelines for our directors uh, to use for that. And um, let's see. So what we have, we either can do a one-time merit uh, increase, which does not have an adjustment to the base, or in some cases, we may provide both, a one-time merit increase as well as uh, um, an adjustment to, to the base. And so uh, what we're proposing for this year, for FY 2017 budget, which will be ending uh, at the end of December, we're going to be providing the, is it the one-time? The one-time will come out of that. So that was already approved by uh, the commissioners for the FY 2017 budget. So we'll do the one-time merit in the FY 2017 budget. As far as increasing uh, to the base, that will take effect January. Mm -hmm. So that will be for the FY 2018 um, budget. 52 staff are being recommended to receive one-time merit increases, and these are ranging from $300 to $3,500. It's all based on um, not just performance, but also availability of resources within the programs that the staff um, uh, work under. The guidelines that we provided to our program managers, so if, if your performance evaluation yielded poor performance, uh, no increase. Uh, if it's below average to average performance, that's 0% to 1%, and then as, as you can see, it outlined in the memo. There are some other adjustments that we're gonna be making uh, to base that are related to the health insurance, and I'm gonna defer to Betty to, uh, to explain that. So, um, as we talked about at the last meeting, the cost of the Blue Cross Blue Shield um, has an out-of-pocket in that work maximum of 2,000 and 4,000 out-of-pocket. And so, based on comparability with other public sector employers, um, we thought it would be appropriate to add a $400 insurance adjustment to non-bargaining wages on January 1st. That, the impact of that is that it increases the salary basis it slightly decreases our fringe benefit rate because we still want to have employees paying 25%. Um, but this will help them a little bit in terms of the transition to this new, uh, to this new uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. The $400 insurance adjustment for the entire staff represents a 0.82% increase in our compensation plan for 2018, or $35,200. The movement to minimum of the salary range, that affects a few people. That represents 0.199% or $8,540. The merit to base, which are permanent adjustments as of January 1, is 1.44% or 61693 So the total 2018 permanent pay adjustment, excluding the one-time merit, which will be paid out of the FY17 budget, is 2.46% which is consistent with what the Employers Association has given us for market data in central Illinois. So um, we request approval for our compensation plan. Um, and again, we continue to, and Delitzo, I believe, is um, consistent with our past practice for the last eight years. We don't have any cost of living adjustments. We have a strict merit-based compensation system, which frankly has increased performance and productivity because it's tied to actual performance and specific achievements. Um, we also have quantitative goals in our performance review process, which each of the staff have to um, determine for the prior year and then the upcoming year, and that's how we measure uh, achievements. So, and again, our, our funding structure is a little bit different in that we're not a tax, uh, tax basis organization. Um, 85 percent of our funding is federal and state grants, so we have to operate as entrepreneurs here in terms of getting funding to secure a staff of 233. So we feel that a merit-based system um, is consistent with um, our performance and productivity um, 
um, efforts and the staff has done a really great job despite the budget impasse last year despite delays in contract execution at the state level our staff has performed exceedingly well we've been very successful and we're hoping that will continue in FY18 we request approval thank you all right um, do I hear a motion to approve the um, fiscal year 2018 budget and compensation adjustments approval. second pious any discussion all in favor Aye. 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 opposed <coughs> motion carries um, next we'll have um, Brandy um, she has our Head Start and Early Head Start uh, Head Start uh, grant funding. So Brandy had another, um, conf yeah, she had a conflict <laughs> this morning, so I'm going to pitch it for her. This is the fourth year of a five-year non-competition, non-competitive grant application to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to fund both Head Start, which serves three to five-year-olds, and Early Head Start, which is zero to three. Um, the feds give us a targeted amount. It represents a 1% COLA adjustment to the overall funding package. So for Head Start, the total for program operations is just over 3.1 million. The amount for technical training and technical assistance, which is required by the feds, is 39,051 for regular Head Start. Early Head Start program operations are just under 2 million, 47,000 for training and technical assistance. Um, these grants are in 80-20, that is 80% federal, so the federal portion is 471, and it requires 20% non-federal match, which is just about $1.3 That is typically generated through non-cash efforts, that is in-kind, so um, we have facility rental, we have parent volunteers, we have lots of community input into this program, so we generate the non-federal match through in-kind. Um, Brandy's included the details in terms of budget categories, program options, and program schedules for your review. So this application is due December 1st, and it's consistent with, again, year four out of five years. So, Thank you, Betty. Um, do I have a motion to approve the Head Start and Early Head Start um, continuing grant funding? I move to approve. Sorry. Aye. Um, Charles? Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. Uh, now, we, I presume uh, Betty will also give us the Head Start and Early Head Start 2016-2017 um, self-assessment. So, and I, you know, I'm not really familiar a lot with the process itself, but the federal government requires that we do an internal self-assessment, which means that the program staff and the governing body get together and there's a monitoring protocol that kind of mirrors what the feds are going to do when they come in here in the winter and just assess where we are program wide and it's an opportunity for us to find out where our strengths are where there might be any gaps where there might be some weaknesses that we need to address so that self-assessment report is in here for your information it talks about the process and sort of the outcomes of that exercise and it's generally a very good exercise because it's all inclusive of the staff governing body and policy council um, that has to be approved and placed on file as well all right thank you um, Tim Pius very good any discussion all in favor Aye. 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 opposed motion carries we will go on to our um, uh, 2018 uh, regional planning proposed meeting calendar for the dates for the upcoming year and who's going to do that report is that, is that information only or is it it's informational and I don't know if I think this is just gives the commissioners an opportunity to populate your calendars to know when these meetings are but they're generally the fourth Friday of every month. Part of where we do have to approve that because this this comes to stand for yes. posting on file for outside agencies, so it's really an open meetings act requirement. We should, but you have to approve it. Okay. Yeah. And for publication on the newspaper, needs to be yeah. approved. Yeah. Okay. I I, I seem like in the past we always did. So mm -hmm. yeah. I've moved that we approve the calendar for 2018. All right. Second. Thank you. 
All right. And any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This brand is working awful hard. <laughs> All right. All right. Motion carries. Um, Betty, we. Sure. So. Randy has included the enrollment, the attendance, meal counts, um, reports for family support services, health and disability, our financial reports, um, and policy council minutes for your review. All right. Um, is there a motion to accept and place on file our Head Start and Early Head Start report? I'll make, I'll make All right. Dennis and Jim, you want to second it? I'll second it. All right. Um, any discussion? The only discussion would be that I think there's been quite of an expansion this, over this year, which is fantastic, right in Urbana and uh, new buildings in Urbana and throughout the county. Um, and I think that's just fantastic early learning for our kids throughout the community and for our schools is really something very positive for them and their families and our community. So it's great. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And for Brandy. All right. I wish it was, I mean, it. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, the program division updates. Um, Betty will be first. Sure. So, um, as you might expect, we're getting ready to close out the, the fiscal year, which ends December 31st. So, the staff is busy with that. We've also been advised, and we talked at the last RPC meeting about the SNAP to Success proposal. We've been advised by um, the Illinois Department of Human Services and the <clears throat> USDA that our proposal looked really great, and we look forward to funding. They intend to come down here and have a press release with Carl and with um, with the folks at Carl and with us to to highlight this public-private partnership. So we're excited about this. Um, we'll be supporting not just their support services and patient representatives, but their health care tech and training positions. So these will take eligible um, food stamp clients and work towards self-sufficiency. We look forward in this phase one to serving about 64 participants to get them fully engaged and fully employed um, during these academies. So subsequent to their eight-week intensive academies, they will be hired full-time at Carl, so they'll have full-time permanent positions with benefits. So we're really excited about this proposal and hope that we can expand this uh, further to other private organizations within Champaign County. Um, we're working with our WEA partners. I think uh, Lisa will speak to that to try to, to continue to advance the federal requirements for WEA by business engagement. The labor shed study will begin uh, in early January. Uh, one of the things of note that um, I'd, I'd like the Commission to know about, the Federal Uniform Guidance requires that we submit um, our single audit report no later than nine months after the end of the fiscal year, which would be September 30. Um, the county um, issues that report. The RPC participates um, under the Champaign County umbrella. We have a new audit firm Baker Tilly out of Oak Brook, who has conducted the single audit this year. Generally, by this time, we would have presented it to the commission, but that report has not yet been issued, and it's my understanding that the delays are the result of um, issues of reconciliation with um, data at the nursing home. So um, I bring this to your attention because we've been advised at one point by the State Department of Commerce that they would suspend our funding pending receipt of that audit. So. It's an area of concern for us. We did get a letter from the county auditor to support the fact that these delays were it had result of extenuating circumstances with regard to that reconciliation. There were no issues related to the RPC, either fiscal or compliance. But you know, this may raise some questions going forward with our funding agency. So we're hopeful that this report is issued in its final form by the end of November. But I. I wanted to advise the commissioners about that delay. <clears throat> there are also some issues in the circuit court that are delaying it too. In fact, we have an item on the county board agenda dealing with that coming up. Okay, thank you, Betty. Um, do since Becky's not here is. Uh, is someone else going to do the human so resources? So I think trip? Becky's giving you a report in terms of um, hiring and vacancies. I think we've been 
a bit more successful in terms of filling a lot of our teaching positions, so we're excited about that, um, particularly in light of the fact that we offer fairly um, extensive educational benefits, which is attractive to a lot of our teachers and entry-level support staff. So we hope to continue to get a good, solid uh, staffing plan. So we're making progress there. All right. Thank you, Betty. Um, Lisa has our community services update. Sorry, I talk so loud I forget about this. So um, I've included a report in your packet. I'll just highlight some of the report. Um, we have submitted applications to the United Way to continue funding for our emergency shelter for families and also submitted a proposal to um, extend some additional services for persons needing utility assistance in order to move into subsidized housing. We are happy to hear that we have been invited back to complete full applications for both of these programs, so we'll be undergoing the application process for that. Our LIHEAP team is in full force. Last year we served nearly 6,000 individuals. To date, as of November 7th, we had um, assisted 548 households with the PIP service and then nearly 1,300 1, households with the LIHEAP benefits. So we're underway with the assistance with the LIHEAP. Katie Scissors Harmon has um, joined our community services team. She's a wonderful addition. She's got a lot of experience in social services and we're happy to include her in our team. We are also working with our um, continuum of care on homeless issues, particularly expanding a coordinated entry system and we have technical assistance from um, Housing Urban Development. So we're working with technical assistance and trying to make sure we have a robust system for um, coordinated entry for homeless. We um, created a community needs assessment committee and have reviewed a survey that's underway currently. I've talked about the community needs assessment that we do um, throughout Champaign County and so we've started that effort as we speak. Um, the Workforce Innovation Summit was held and happy to hear, happy to report that both Pius and Jim Ayers attended that with us and we're continuing our work um, in workforce. The Youth Assessment Center We've been working to make sure that people are aware of the work that we're doing. We presented to the Community Coalition Executive Committee and then also the General Community Coalition, um, Champagne Coalition, last month. Um, we also attended the um, County Board's Committee of the Whole, prepared and shared some data outcomes, particularly um, over 90% of youth in 2015 and then also 2016 were diverted from official adjudication in the court system. So that's very important work that we're doing at the Youth Assessment Center. Um, so I'm happy to, I guess the other thing to talk about is, I think most people have learned that we were, are looking for a, a, a new facility for the Youth Assessment Center as of March. So we have been exploring potential um, facilities for the work that we're doing at the Youth Assessment Center and we have some good prospects and then also potentially a a uh, financial backer to support that. So I'm happy to field any questions related to this report or anything else in community services. All right, thank you. All right, um, if there's no questions, uh, do I have a motion to accept and place on file our division updates? So oh, I'm sorry, Rita. I know that. I, I looked right past San you too. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to move right along here. So we have one more report from Rita. Sorry. Good morning, everybody. Um, staff was busy this past month putting together the infra grant application for building the Cruz Road underpass and the improvements uh, to the Cruz Road uh, between Wesley Avenue and First Street. We successfully submitted the grant for $38 million. Uh, of those uh, $38 million, uh, we are requesting 52% uh, from the federal funding because we were able to secure funding from the state through the ICC program and also local funding from uh, the village and local funding from Champaign County in kind and also uh, from a private organization. Then with that, uh, we are hoping that we'll be successful on getting the funding because the funding is 60-40 and we are requesting only 48% of that. That would be great, we'll know about it uh, next year. 
Uh, at this time, we are working on a grant application for the first street chair use path between Cudis Road and Windsor Road. Uh, we already uh, got the approval for uh, the Eastman from the university, and at this time, we are working with the village of Savoy on uh, the design and cost estimates and all that to submit the grant by uh, the 1st of December. We are also working on uh, the approval process for the San Joe <laughs> zoning ordinance. It has been a long process, but hopefully by the end of the year we'll get that approved. That's my hope. <laughs> yeah. And lastly, um, I received an invitation from the Illinois Department of Transportation. There will be a scan group. This is a group of people that were put together to, uh, from different uh, DOTs around the United States that are visiting different states to learn about how they have been using the Highway Safety Manual. This is a kind of new document that was put together by the American Association of State and Highway Transportation Officials. And uh, that document is um, a new tool that engineers can use to uh, estimate future crashes. Then um, these people are coming to IDOT to learn about what IDOT has been doing at different levels, state, district, and local level. We have been the agency invited to participate to uh, provide information on how we have been using this tool at the local level. Not too many uh, MPOs or uh, local agencies have used the tool. And we actually use the tool to do the benefit cost analysis for the infra grant that we submitted. And that's something new. Uh, innovative, and that's why I thought invited us. Then I'll be there uh, Monday and Tuesday after Thanksgiving, attending that and doing the presentation about our <coughs> efforts here. Any questions? No? OK. No questions. Thank you very much for your hard work. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, now we will move forward with our motion to accept and place on file our division reports. All right. All right. A second. Um, no further discussion. Is there approval? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion carried. All right. Um, Delitzo will bring us this. Um, CEO management report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the first item I was um, reporting to the commissioners is that I'm preparing my um, first six month report, uh, being here at the RPC. Uh, that will be a written report that will be submitted uh, to the commissioners before December 1st. Uh, we'll highlight some of our accomplishments, some of the work uh, that has been done since I started here June 1st. I uh, also just returned from a visit that was sponsored by the chamber. Champaign County First. Champaign County First. Uh, uh, we did a we took a, a visit to Des Moines, Iowa. Um, we had uh, both mayors, mayor of Champaign and Urbana, the entire city council. Um, we had one private business. Uh, Commissioner Motley was was uh, uh, on the tour as well. And a couple staff from city of Urbana as well as uh, uh, city of Champaign. Uh, it definitely was an eye-opening um, visit. Uh, clearly, Des Moines has a lot of uh, assets that we may not have here, but there are certainly some great ideas that we can certainly integrate into doing regional economic development. So I'm sure there will be more of that you'll be hearing about. But um, I certainly found it a very um, um, worthwhile visit. Uh, there's clearly a role, I think, for the RPC. Uh, and so uh, looking forward to working with all the uh, folks that were on, on the tour. I don't know if you have anything. No? OK. Um, we're also getting ready to uh, embark on some planning. Uh, we have a retreat that has been scheduled for December 1st, which will involve all of our uh, division directors. 
Uh, we are about to embark on an agency-wide assessment to look at you know, our structure, systems, and everything else that we do as an organization. And so we're going to be working with a, a facilitator to kind of structure what our process is going to look like that will engage the staff at the RPC. So that's going to be December 1st. Um, the other thing is to Lisa's report. Uh, we have been working with staff uh, in providing, um, you know, outcomes data, particularly related to the Youth Assessment Center. And uh, we did share that, as she pointed out, with uh, all of the county board members uh, earlier this week. And um, we have uh, asked if we could present uh, at next week's meeting, so uh, not sure uh, how that's going to play out. But certainly uh, there was quite a bit of support, I think, for, for the Youth Assessment Center. And um, whatever information we need to provide, we're certainly happy to do so. Uh, last thing I will report on is uh, kind of related to that. We will be continuing to strengthen our outcomes uh, in all of our various programs, working with staff on uh, developing logic models for uh, all of our work so that we are thinking about outcomes on the front end. Um, everyone is interested, not just in the social value of some of the programs that we provide, but the cost and benefit. So uh, we want to make sure that um, the funding that we receive that, that certainly um, is a worthwhile investment in terms of what we're doing in our community. And so we'll be providing reports on that to, to the commissioners as we fully develop um, logic models for all of our uh, programs. That's all I have. Thank right. you. Thank you. Um, old business? New business? All right, is there um, a motion to adjourn? So a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of a slow one. Yeah, well, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.